Not even Kathleen Kennedy knows what is next after the rise of Skywalker. That is the headline on today's Force Friday show. Yes, Stephen, you're absolutely right. It's coming in from Cinema Blend. It's Kathleen Kennedy. She has been discussing the next slate of Star Wars releases. It's a very long and winded quote. Yeah. I shall try and paraphrase it. But basically, she says no to the uh, question asking what's coming next. Do they know what's coming next? She says we've got various things we're looking at, various ways in which we can begin or not. It's quite imposing or... Uh, I don't even know what word I was wanting to use there, but essentially she says they have endless possibilities. It's liberating, it's exciting, it creates a lot of pressure and anxiety as well. They can go mm. back, they can go forward. What is your thoughts on this, Stephen? Um, Does this hint that there may be uncertainty in the president of Lucasfilm's future? Uh, our connections with these I think something movies. that does confirm John is that it's not Ryan Johnson's films. No, it isn't. That has not been confirmed yet that he is officially off. No, he's still going on um, about it. You yeah. know, so, yeah, he's still but talking about it. I think we all it. know what's going to happen there. And this kind of semi confirms it as well. The fact that she's not able to give a you know a definitive answer on a very simple question. You know, we're talking um, 2022. So yeah, we're well, talking... she says that there's still a movie penned in for 2022. Yeah, but, but they don't have firm details on it. Yeah, yeah, they can't confirm. Apparently, uh, it may be in January. Well, I think obviously. I think because of the Ryan Johnson sort of uncertainty, and obviously with uh, Binoff and Wise stepping away as well, John, it's mm. it's it's threw everything up in there now. Um, two years ago, um, I think it was Bob Iger confirmed um, they weren't doing the standalone films anymore. So they've got nothing set in concrete now. So I understand the answer, but um, we're talking three years away um, or two years away. Um, so it's just one of those things it's unfortunate um, the fact that she has said that they have got something planned um, is something I suppose for Star Wars fans but um, you know in the meantime we've got the Mandalorian to look forward to Obi-Wan Kenobi series as well and obviously the the, the Rogue One sort of prequel type like thing Cassian you know, Andor, Cassian yeah. Andor. so um, there's enough there to keep us busy for the next two three years anyway yeah um, it might ironically be that um, you know that we'll get so conditioned with the television series that we'll not want the films anymore yeah it's a certainly yeah. a possibility Steve and I find it very interesting that she's even raising her head above the parapet she's been hiding for quite a long time now and it almost feels like now that the Mandalorian is out in well, four territories, I believe, in the Netherlands, Canada, I think Australia and the United States. But not out here now, or I'm not. Yes, not out here, sadly, although I have seen it. Wink. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that's obviously a success, the Mandalorian. Uh, I feel like she's perhaps been emboldened to come out and speak about Star Wars again. Though, of course, ironically, <laughs> I don't even know if it is irony. I never understand that. Is it sarcastic? I don't know. She doesn't have any link to the Mandalorian. No. It's actually John Favreau and Dave Filoni. Although, in fairness to her, she did bring those two together and say, "Look, exactly, do something." Yeah. She's not connected to the TV side. She was overseeing the films, the, the theatrical, or what the hell, feature-length movies. Yeah. They've been a disaster in the main. This one's a success. She now pops out, but she's full of uncertainty and she's not really sure what the hell's going on. So, what do I make of it? I think she's gone, Stephen. A um, contract is up when twenty twenty one. Yeah. Uh, the next movie's 2022 at the absolute earliest. I think she's going to be replaced. I think Bob Iger's deliberately came out and delayed the movies, put a, put them on a standstill or whatever, uh, and it's done in a deliberate manner to see her out the door, maybe keep her reputation intact. Hopefully The Rise of Skywalker's uh, a success, a box office hit, and then she can go off into the, the twin sunsets, very happy with her tail between her legs. <laughs> and then they can move on and perhaps bring in John Favreau as the president of Lucasfilm because that is the latest rumour as well, well that, that is the vibe, John, yeah. it may be John Favreau who has been earmarked to replace Kathleen Kennedy I feel like this is what's happening that someone is going to come in and replace it be it Kevin Feige, John Favreau or a Dave Filoni I think her days are numbered she's coming out this is why she can't say for certain what's happening in the next slate of releases because she herself doesn't know uh, now, Stephen, I don't know what you'd make of John Favreau coming in. Is that an appointment you'd like to see? There was talk of Kevin Feige, but of course he's now the overseer of all things Marvel. So I don't think he will have time. No. And the multi-limbs. It's almost like, what was that guy called in the cantina on the Coruscant? 
and uh, Obi Wan, he had multiple yeah. limbs. Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, sadly, Dex she has. Yeah, yeah. Dex. She's not got those amount. Of, he's not got those amount of limbs. He yeah. can't juggle at all. So, would you like to see Favreau come in? Do you think that'd be a and a good appointment? I, I think anyone that's got his background, John, and more importantly, as, as a Star Wars fan, um, I think that's the key to it. Someone that understands the franchise, someone that appreciates the the work that Dave Filoni and the guys, uh, Pablo Hidalgo. I want to yeah. say that name. Yeah, yeah. he's a canon I've guy. I've not heard of him for a while. He's um, been very quiet. Yeah, so... We'll get um, into that in a minute yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I want people like that involved, you know, people that understand the... They call it legends now or whatever. It's the expanded universe from yesteryear, John. It took, obviously, you know, um, started, you know, after Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it was naff, but there was a lot of good th things in there as well. A lot of good elements, which... Some of uh, the things they've took on board for, uh, you know, Lucasfilm took on board for the likes of Rebels, etc. Yeah, so, talking. Um, They're uh, not talking, uh, throwing. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, talking as well. Yeah, so um, as, uh, you can't ask for any more than that. You know, John Favreau is a fantastic producer. Um, he's a great writer as well. Um, so... Why not? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So, and you know, he knows the franchise inside out. Um, he grew up with it. He's at that age, John, where he was just the right age when um, you know Star Wars came out. Uh, that is nineteen seventy seven Star Wars. And yes, Stephen, you're absolutely right. He does. He gets it. And as you did allude to, he's a great producer, a great writer. But more importantly, he's got that tie with Disney. He's worked with them on the Jungle Book. He's worked with them on the Lion King, on the Iron Man movie. And he's a hands-on as well, John. He is hands-on, yeah. and he gets Star Wars, Stephen. It was his idea to write The Mandalorian. He also laid out the various episodes. He's a showrunner. He, he came up with this interesting concept of this lone gunslinger out in the outer rims of the galaxy after the fall of the Empire. And it really it has proven to be a success, this TV show. I've watched it, despite the fact they are quite condensed or short. They, they pack a punch, and that previous episode, episode two, despite being a filler episode... Still highly enjoyable. It felt like Star Wars. It felt like the original trilogy aesthetically in terms of storytelling, the characters, the lived-in feel. So this guy understands Star Wars. If he could come in and maybe work in tandem with Dave Filoni and be the all-seeing, all-hearing guy at Lucasfilm, I think that's a step forward. But I know we have another person. I want to say it's Michelle Rewan or something who is overseeing the actual live-action productions. But if he can come in and maybe impart his wisdom. Just, he just seems to have that knack for creating really good projects. I don't know what that is. And then that would be a really good positive thing for Star yeah. Wars. Certainly when you're getting the likes of Feige coming in and doing a couple of movies as well. Those guys together, those creative juices flowing, it will be something special. Final thing I'll say, Stephen, about Kathleen Kennedy. I'll broach this little short topic within a topic before we move swiftly onwards. She's also, she's been doing a lot of speaking, as I did say. She's raised her head above the parapet. She's been speaking about, I'm paraphrasing heavily here, but them not having enough uh, legends or something, or canon, or stuff yeah. to work off of, stories to work off of, to adapt into movies. So it's very hard to, to also adapt and yeah. create new movies going forward, new characters. What is your thoughts on that? Because for me, yeah. that is absolute nonsense. But you touched upon they have the expanded I, universe. I think she's trying to be as polite as she can, yeah. John, without saying... She there doesn't is know anything of, about there, Star Wars. Well, that, but if she, <laughs> even if she did, John, I think perhaps she's been a little bit polite in saying, I know there's a lot of material out there, but there's a lot. Of, most of it's naff. Yeah, and, what we're is? Not, and we can't use it. So that narrows the, obviously the options down. But, but even but, more recently, Stephen, you've got Claudia Gray, you've got the likes of Timmy Vizan coming yeah. back, you've got whole, Chuck, Chuck Wendig, Wendig yeah. you've got a whole yeah, host exactly. of great writers in there who have created some amazing stories, some interesting characters which have not been brought over to the cinematic universe, you could bring in Tarkin, again, I keep saying Tarkin, throwing, uh, I know he had a moment on Rebels, but bring him in and give him his life action story, he's such an interesting character, you could bring in a Mara Jade, there's a whole host of things, the old Republic has not been touched Do, do you yet. remember the rumour Benicio Del Toro was going to be him? Yeah. Um, you know, that that was going to be a big reveal? I wish he was, Jesus Christ, yeah. we got DJ, the stuttering junkie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, called a murderous bastard by Finn <laughs> and then ultimately disappeared off and never really added anything to the no, plot at no. all. Stephen, that, that's the final thing I would add though. I mean, I think she's talking nonsense. Uh, and actually, speaking about Knights of the Old Republic, it brought it back into my mind. There was a person get brought on, I think it was a producer of Avatar, who was supposed to be adapting the actual Knights of the Old Republic game into a movie. That seems to have died to death. Yeah. Perhaps when the standalone movies were shelved, that disappeared off into the 
twin sunset as well, just like Kathleen Kennedy. Hopefully, will be in three years' time, two years' time. Yeah. But you, Stephen, I don't know if you've got much more to add to Not the whole really, Kathleen because Kennedy I think, thing. Um, there is enough material out there, John. People writing all the time, um, so that's nonsense. Um, I, she doesn't fancy it, or no. she doesn't know it. That's the the two options, really. I think she was a mistake, Stephen, from day one. She she's a great producer. We've said it before, but she is not indoctrinated in Star Wars enough. She doesn't well, doesn't get it. So I think George Lucas didn't see her having this the role that she turned out to be. Yeah. I think her initial role was to oversee things, not be too involved. You know, let that. You know, let the likes of Filoni. the Favaros, the Filonis yeah. deal with the sort of production side of things, but. Um, when she's putting herself out there all the time, she seems to appear more than the likes of Bob Iger does, um, or Kevin Feige. Um, you know, they should be there to introduce and then take a step back, but yeah. she seems to be quite hands-on. People have accused her of having certain agendas, etc. So she doesn't really help herself too much. Um, most presidents, my experience with them anyway in my former life, um, always have a back step. They're there as a sort of figurehead and that's that, you know. Yeah but they let the other people who do what they do best do. Absolutely, Steve, and that's for you, all over. He yeah. allows, he is the sort of a guy that gives them the guideline, but he allows the likes of Taika Waititi and all of these other great actors, Josh Whedon's and the Russo's and whatnot. Well, she kind of did that it. with Ryan Johnson. Yeah, and look how that paid yeah. off. So, yeah, perhaps she should change it up again. I don't know. But, Steve, we'll move on to the next topic. This will yeah. be another multi-topic within a topic. It's all about, there is another, essentially, uh, th- two theories, and it's all... <laughs> Coming back to obviously those famous words from that little green guy Yoda in the Empire Strikes Back, him saying, No, there is another. Now, Digital Spy are going down the route of could this other be him alluding to? And I want to say this is the Ray one, yeah, uh, but I'm not sure if it is. This actually may be the one. No, this is a Mandalorian one. They're alluding to could it be Baby Yoda? Did Yoda know of Baby Yoda's potential existence or future? And could he be this another they're speaking of, or he's speaking of? No. And then we have, I believe it is the Independent, going with another theory based off there is another. And he's saying, that they're saying, could Yoda have had some premonition of Ray and the sense that Ray was going to come in? What's your thoughts? Was it Leia? Was it Yoda? Or was it Ray? Well, I'm going to say this to the Digital <laughs> Spy and the Independence. Yoda spoke of another. The other he spoke of was your twin sister. Put it to bed. There you yeah. Are. <laughs> Return of, watch Return of the Jedi Independent exactly. and Digital Spy he answers exactly. the question yeah. the other I spoke of was your twin sister Leia yeah Stephen I agree with you um, it could be a very quick topic because we have agreed wholly there yeah. I think it's Leia as well I think they're clutching massively they're trying to but lend credits to Ray's the only reason I was force. ready for that John is because there was massive debate after The Force Awakens where they had that yeah. you know, just the punters out on social media and Twitter were saying Ray's got to be the other one that they mentioned and the Empire Strikes Back etc etc and then people were quashing it with the mm. Return of the Jedi line so no, but it's clearly, it's, it clearly is Leia yeah. because they didn't know it, it about would Ray have been then. pretty cool obviously if that wasn't addressed in Return of yeah. the Jedi but it had to be because George Lucas wrote the Return of the Jedi as the final Star Wars film at that point Absolutely. So. Stephen look it's just getting back into what fans like to do they over theorise and there's just something about Star Wars that's almost like unfinished arcs or little lines that go nowhere and then in 20, 30, 40 years time they go back and they address it. It's like the character on the, the indoor yeah. plant, uh, moon. I, I, listen John, I'm, I'm more trooper. interested in finding out who Cypher is. Yeah. It was Cypher never Deus. explained. Well, it will be perhaps in 20 years time, Stephen, when they finally go back yeah. and say, well, well, there's that character, we'll go and see where this arc could have went. I've seen it, as I did say, with the trooper on the indoor, they turned it in. I want to see it was Commander Cody. Yeah. Uh, I don't know yeah. if that's correct. Uh, from Clone Wars and yeah. then Rebels, so it's something they like to do, but look, it doesn't make sense. Oh here. no, you, uh, Cody was uh, um, no, no. he was the 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 clone. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, um, the clone trooper. Not, yeah, not the bearded one. No, no, I, I'm thinking of the bearded yeah. one. Yeah, I can't recall what his name was. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, it's, Steve, it's nonsense essentially. But what do you think of this? Be I know you've not actually seen the Mandalorian, but you no. have seen obviously the artwork and you've seen the photographs. Could they have been speaking about this baby Yoda? Is it even remotely, even the tiniest, like 0.011% <laughs> no. chance? Uh, the funny thing and is... What's your John, thoughts on that baby th- Yoda? Well, Just I think he's about 50 years old. Um, he's 50, he is 50 years because old. Because someone did a comparison with him and Paul Rudd. You know how they do this thing where <laughs> this person's 50 and so is Paul Rudd. And Paul yeah. Rudd obviously 
outshines everyone because <laughs> yes. of his youthfulness. Yeah. Um, so that was the, the thing. I didn't realise uh, this creature. I don't it's, even know what species No, we still is. don't know. Um, yeah. it's, it's a strange one, you know, but... Um, it's been a real star turn in the show so far, though, Steve. It's going to be one of the ones that's going to disappoint you, John, when they finally have a name for the species. Very yeah. much like uh, Palpatine's first name. I sincerely hope they don't. Down. They don't. They hope they don't broach that, Stephen. They leave that mysteriousness around the character. I can say it today, incidentally. Couldn't say mystery or mysteriousness yesterday, but I hope that's something they leave. It uh, leaves some mystery. It was almost like the solo thing. That's why no one wanted a solo movie. They want that <laughs> mysteriousness around the character. It adds to it when you've got some ambiguity. How he got his surname? Though, How he terrible. got his surname? Yeah, solo. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Got no family. I'll just call you solo. Terrible. Someone from the Empire is naming him, and he stuck with it. Yeah, wow. god awful. Final thing I'd add, Steve, as we're on the subject of Yoda and Baby Yoda, there is a little article I have opened here. Yes. John Favreau sharing some concept art of yeah, the Baby pretty Yoda. Cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. What's your thoughts on him potentially spoiling the TV show and one of the major, major characters in the first two episodes uh, to the whole UK audience who haven't officially got a chance to watch this, movie, this TV show yet? Yeah. Uh, John, if you're on social media a lot, you're going to get spoiled yeah. anyway. It's just... We, we did say this was going to happen. Um, I've tried my best to avoid as much as I can, but it's everywhere. You know, the minute the episode drops, it's everywhere yeah. on your timeline. There's nothing you can do about it. The The photographs are actually pretty cool, to be honest with you. I didn't, didn't mind seeing them. Um, I thought the visuals in them were pretty cool. I thought the... I don't know if it was CG, if it's a puppet or not. I don't know I think it's a is. combination of two, yeah. Stephen. Much of this TV show seems to be a combination of live action, or not live action, what's it called? Uh, practical effects yeah. and CG. Because there's elements where it does look quite fake and then there's other bits okay. where it's moving around and it looks pretty neat. But yeah, look, I've not got much more to add to that. I think it's absolute nonsense. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to move on to the final topic on today's yeah. first Friday show. On that note, Stephen, it's all about these new Rise of Skywalker character posters that were shared, I believe, on Wednesday there. Uh, and there's been a whole array of individual ones. We've got the likes of Ray, obviously Poe, and we've got Finn, and we've got Kylo. And we've got Chewie and Lando and so on. We've even got that little crap droid uh, whose name yeah, eludes me at the moment. Yeah. yeah, it looks like a hairdryer. But we haven't got Luke, Leia or Chief Palpatine himself. So that was the angle I was going to yeah. address this topic from. Is there anything nefarious going on under the surface? Why they're not sharing the three older legacy characters when we've got Lando? Um, and what's your thoughts on the posters in general? The posters were running in the middle. They were like bubblegum cards. That's you know, exactly just, what it's like, um, yeah. I saw them on Twitter John the other day and I, yeah I mean it's, I've seen all the characters this is the thing apart from the girl um, I, I wasn't sure who she was um, I don't uh, know her name um, Jana I, I don't Jana. know who she is I don't she's know the leader I, of I an all batch is yeah it's Naomi Aki alright okay yeah I just reading it there did, did not know that John um, <laughs> uh, I see she does uh, look pretty damn cool Rose's um, yeah, Rose Tico's got a card as well. Uh, Wonderful. Look, the, th the thing is, they, they all look like they're all um, dressed up for the jungle. Um, yeah, you know, it's because they're going to that jungle planet, yeah. Yeah, they've all got that kind of gear on, you know, that kind of safari gear on. So. Stephen Rose looks much better without the jumpsuit. Let's oh, be that honest. Was, the boiler yeah, suit was god awful. Any favors. Um, it really that, that's not her fault. Um, Very short person. But I, I think um, the, 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 the absence of the, we'll call them the big three, because that's what they are. Um, Lando kinda, will be raging with you. I don't regard him as one of the big characters. <laughs> I never did. Will um, you get going, you pirate? It, it was a... Uh, yeah, yeah. He should have just pirate. walked into that big paint behind him. <laughs> Not paint. Uh, so I uh, think um, it does raise the question, John, what form are we going to get to see Palpatine in? The you know, speculation is that um, it could be a spirit of some kind. I would prefer that, I've got to be honest with you, I don't really want to see a physical form of Palpatine. I would like to think that Luke and Anakin had did something, at least in Return of the Jedi, that was worthwhile, um, <laughs> rather than just pee all over their, their efforts, you know. Um, the, the other thing about Luke and Leia, Leia, sadly because Carrie Fisher passing, um, they've got limited resource, um, so I don't know how they're going to handle that, whether or not she's going to be... Force ghost or not I think she's going to die in the film I think she's going to pass away oh, naturally absolutely. I think it's going to be very much like the way Yoda passed away um, it'll be interesting to see how they, they explain that one um, they still could have put her in one of the posters though because we've seen her obviously in the trailers um, Luke on the other hand I don't know what they're doing here Mark Hamill has not been involved in any promotion of this film um, 
some might say that he's. Did you see he, his tweet, just, Stephen? I didn't see his tweet, John. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, but <laughs> it just he, I, remember what he was like during the Force Awakens promotion, which he wasn't hardly in half a minute. Um, then, um, obviously, for the Last Jedi, he was never off our screens, and he was loving the attention, etc. He's just faded into the background, which suggests to me he's not got a big role to begin with. I didn't think he would have after The Last Jedi. Um, that was his curtain call, unfortunately, I think. A lot of speculation saying that he might not have died. I don't know, because it seems like it seems quite a stretch, to be honest with you. Um, apart from, the, obviously, the hand not clunking down after he disappeared. Um, I, I don't know. I think... People don't want to see... Uh, that's going to be one of the reveals, I think, is Luke as a Force ghost. He's going to come back. We don't know when in the film. Well, it might be at the very end. Um, it all depends, John. I don't know. Stephen, I'll get into that tweet first and foremost. That Matt Hamill tweet. You're speaking about him not really being involved in the promotion. Some guy tweeted him. I think he'd bought, I don't know, 30 tickets to go and see The, the Rise of Skywalker. Don't he says it better be worth it. And he replied... Don't waste your money or something along those lines, wow. basically. So <laughs> that's what Mark Hamill thinks well, of he's it. He's got a twisted sense yeah. of humour. Yeah, has got yeah. yeah. And Too- everyone at Lucasfilm knows what he's like. Yeah. So it's one of those ones that's kind of tongue in cheek with him. You yeah. get his humour as well. You know, he's obviously a big um, if anyone's young ones and bottom fan. Yeah. You know, Monty Python. So um, yeah, I mean, if it was anybody else, I'd be shocked. I'd yeah. be saying, "What are they doing?" You know, but well, the fact it's Mark Hamill, he seems to get away with a lot more than most actors do in Star Wars. It's because he's Luke Skywalker, Stephen. He is the man himself. Luke it's F the, and Skywalker. He's Luke F and Skywalker. Yeah. Uh, what was it? He says in Dogma, was it? Don't f with a Jedi Master or something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, Stephen. Look, you're right. He's uh, almost Silent Bob. Yeah, uh, Jane Silent Bob. Sorry, yeah. yeah. I'm getting my Kevin Smith movies mixed up. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I've been smoking a joint with you. Yeah, uh, I wish. Uh, but yeah, Stephen, you're right. He's almost got a British-centric sense of humour, yeah. Mark. So I got it right away. He's very dry, sarcastic. And that was a great comeback. But Stephen, you're right in what you're saying. I think um, I think it will be a false ghost. I don't think they'll completely wreck on The Last Jedi, although a part of me sincerely wishes they would. Uh, just because the hand didn't clunk, he left that open. But there was so many goofs in The Last Jedi. I mean, there was that guy uh, fighting in the throne room who had a, an additional sword, then it disappeared. Yeah. Conveniently, so he couldn't stab Rhea or whatever, uh, Kyle, whoever yeah. it was. So there was so many gaffes in that. So I think that was just another one. Uh, I don't think he's going to be alive, but if there is uh, a root cause behind him not showing those two anyway, I think Leia, it's purely because they don't want to tarnish her memory by doing anything tacky like that. I think they'll keep her under wraps for the movie, keep it a nice surprise, hopefully. But for, obviously, Luke and Sheaf, it could be that their appearances may be massive spoilers. If they put them on the card and they're not misadvertising, and then it could be a huge spoiler. Yeah. Luke could still be alive, or he could be some strange, I don't know, he could be taking some strange form. The same with Palpatine, he could perhaps be some Sith Force ghost that he could be alive and you don't want to spoil it it could be Matt Smith after all yeah. which I'm still convinced yeah. it is I've got to tell you I think I, it's still I've Matt Smith to, I've got to say John which just popped into my head it would be very interesting if there's sort of amalgamation between a Force ghost look and a spirit of Palpatine oh, try to fight each other within the actual <laughs> presence of the spirit I don't know it just yeah, it'd be a bit Jekyll and Hyde but yeah. um we don't know, John. It's all speculation at this point, and I think that's probably for the best because I think if they did have um, look on one of these um, posters with a glow around them, we know, we know right away, all oh, right, he's dead. Okay. What did? What if we had a Doctor Sleep set up where it was all the dead Jedi and Sith coming together and all fighting, like when Danny Torrance lets all those Siths well, out the, the rings, boxes? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like the army of undead. Yeah, yeah. I can't recall what they were called that army. Well, the. It's, Imagine that. It, that it, would, it goes to say, John, that it's, it wouldn't be the first time Star Wars uh, is borrowed from Lord of the Rings. So, yeah. um, who knows? Uh, again, we just don't know. It's all speculation. We'll find out in a month's time. We, we surely, yes, we surely will, Stephen. But look, I've not got much more to add to it. No? Uh, the posters were neat. Uh, they were okay. They were like baseball posters. You were yeah. right. What was it you said? Baseball, baseball? Yeah, bubble gum. Yeah, cards, bubble yeah. gum. That's what they're like. Yeah. Uh, they're okay, but I don't need to have this movie promoted or shoved down my throat anymore. I thought you were going to say you don't need this movie. Well, I don't need the movie now, Stephen. I've got the Mandalorian and even in its short 27, 29 minute forms, still infinitesimally better in terms of storytelling. Hopefully I'll be wrong. Hopefully come December I'm eating my words 
And yeah. it's the greatest goddamn Star Wars the, movie ever. I think crafted. the week running up to it, John, I think we're going to we're going to be pumped up for it because yeah, I, think, so. I think it's 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 a very unique experience for a Star Wars film. that's only four or five weeks away. It's crazy. We're not really that excited just yet, but it's because Star Wars is like it is. There's no spoilers out there. We don't know where the story's going. We still don't know the characters. No. We're two films in. This is going to be the third film. Hopefully we get to know who Ray is. And who's Poe. And yeah. who's Finn. Yeah. I'm just saying their names, Stephen, so I can get tell right. myself yeah, that I know the names and it's not pinning for. Like I says, I will. I can get edited out. But yeah, look, Stephen, I'll end on that note. Before I dig myself yeah. one almighty trench of a hole, uh, what did you guys make of the topics we broached today. What do you think about this Kathleen Kennedy nonsense? She doesn't know what's going on in the future. Is she being replaced with John Favreau? Do you agree with her that there isn't enough great stories in the archives to do Star Wars movies from? What do you make about these fairies? There is another. Is it Luke? Luke? Is it Leia, I should say? <laughs> is it the Baby Yoda? Or is it Ray? What the hell do you make about these new, new posters? What do you think about perhaps Luke being alive and they're hiding it through these? I don't know. If you've got anything to say, you can comment below. And let us know what your thoughts are in the comment section. You can like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. And I'll be back again on Monday because Stephen Zofsky for another episode of MBE Movie News.